Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Happy Monday, everybody. I'm Jason Coulthorpe and for Karen today, First at 4, if you wanted hot summer, hot summer weather, I should say, you got it, along with some humidity and a chance for some isolated storms. Meteorologist Ben Bailey keeping a close eye on all of that for us. How's it going, Ben? That's pretty much forecast in a nutshell, Jason. Uh, but yeah, welcome to July. We've got plenty of heat and humidity out there. Current temperatures are in the 80s. Heat index readings have topped 90 degrees in a couple spots. Ann Arbor and Monroe are two of those locations, but the humidity is actually going to get higher as we go overnight into early parts of tomorrow. Now, right now, we don't have any thunderstorms showing up, at least in the southern end of the state. Things are getting a little bit more active here in northern parts of lower Michigan. And if we do see an evening thunderstorm, I think here is going to be the better part, uh, better chances of that in our far north zone. So most of us are going to be dry. It's just going to be warm and muggy. Temperatures falling into the mid 80s by 10 o'clock. We will see some 70s overnight and then get set to sweat for most of this week. We'll look at your seven day forecast coming up. Jason. All right, we look forward to it, Ben. A Dearborn doctor goes to court to face the man who nearly beat him to death. Emmanuel Vaughn was found guilty of assault with a dangerous weapon in May. Prosecutors say he left the doctor unconscious after he punched him in the face and stabbed him 16 times. This morning, that doctor told the court he will never be the same. The feeling of powerlessness, sadness, being scared, and thinking that my life was over will forever remain a part of me. I remain fearful at night. I struggle every day to walk into my office, and the toll that it has taken on me has impacted my family immensely. The doctor also says he has chronic pain from that. Vaughn will spend one to four years in prison. It's the video that has a lot of people talking online. Drivers doing donuts on the Lodge Freeway, making it impossible for anyone else to get by. Well, today, Detroit Police Chief James Craig announced they're investigating six cars that were seen in this video. They made an arrest as well. A 25-year-old man from Canton for reckless driving. Police say he did not have a valid license. Chief Craig says reckless driving is not going to be tolerated. So take the risk. You know, your $70,000 automobile will be impounded. And as we do the forensic work on that car, we find that there's any criminality with that vehicle. You will never see that vehicle again. Amazing video and to see other people blocking traffic so they could do this. Coming up at five, you'll hear what else the chief had to say about putting a stop to reckless driving in Detroit. Macomb County Executive Mark Hackle and Sheriff Anthony Wickersham opened the doors of the Macomb County Jail today to discuss the jail's current conditions. County leaders are pushing for a $375 million ballot measure to fund a new complex that they say will improve the conditions there. The Macomb County Board of Commissioners is weighing that millage for those funds. If it's approved, it would go to the voters in November. We'll take a closer look inside the jail and at that bond proposal tonight at 6. Drivers beware, don't get behind the wheel if you've been drinking at all during this holiday week. Law enforcement is launching a holiday crackdown that's going to be in effect before and after the 4th of July. It's called Drive Sober or Get Pulled Over. It runs today through July 14th all across the state. Of course, it's always illegal to drink and drive, but patrols will be stepped up during that time. And remember, Michigan drivers can be arrested regardless of their blood alcohol level if an officer thinks you're impaired. In other news today, President Donald Trump is facing a pair of nuclear threats with new developments in Iran and North Korea. In Iran, he'll be focusing on uranium production. While the whole world is still trying to figure out if the president setting foot in North Korea helps or hurts diplomacy there. Devin Skillian's in the newsroom tracking both of those stories. Hey, Devin. Yeah, Jason, what did it all mean? That is the big question hanging over President Trump's uh, precedent-shattering visit to North Korea. Looks like he was able to jumpstart the stalled nuclear talks, but it was the president who walked out of that last summit in Hanoi earlier this year. It is clear that Kim received an amazing publicity windfall as North Korea's media released new videos of the meeting on its state-run media. The dictator was given another photo op without really giving up a single nuclear weapon or even sharing information about its weapons program. And today, President Trump retweeted some comments praising his handling of North Korea, did not share, though, any new information on 
what might be coming next. Now let's move to Iran, as Jason mentioned, which is playing a high stakes, high risk game of chicken with the U.S. Just today, Iran confirmed it's broken the limits set on its stockpile of low enriched uranium. Those limits were set by a 2015 international treaty that President Trump abandoned last year. He's using tough sanctions, trying to force Iran back to the bargaining table, but Iran now publicly breaking the treaty, hoping U.S. allies can do something about what have been, uh, for the Iranian economy, backbreaking sanctions. This all leaves countries like Russia, Great Britain, France, all caught in the middle because they have stayed in that treaty with Iran. Both the U.S. and Iran say they don't want war, but they do want leverage, and that leaves the entire Middle East at a very delicate tipping point. Same as it ever was. Jason, back yeah, to you. To say the least, mm -hmm. historic foreign policy. All right, Devin, see you at five. You bet. First of four, we're tracking some of the big stories making headlines across America now. A drawn out drama in the Oregon legislature has ended. Minority Republicans in the state Senate actually left the Capitol for 10 days as a way of stopping Democrats from voting on climate change legislation. Oregon's Democratic governor actually asked state police to search for said Republican lawmakers. So now they're back after the Dems put the climate change bill on hold so they could get to work on other business. And now that legislative session is over. A 73 year old hiker who survived a week lost in the mountains near Los Angeles is out of the hospital today. Airborne search teams finally found Eugene Joe, who got separated from a hiking group. He wandered for a week drinking water from streams and sleeping on rocks warm from the sun. His hiking boots uh, were falling apart and he was able to keep them together with shoelaces. Despite his whole ordeal, though, Joe is recovering quickly, saying it's thanks to his military training. There's a hidden gem on Belle Isle that's getting a $5 million upgrade. Work begins today on the Dawson Great Lakes Museum, which holds some fascinating history. But as Nick Monticelli reports, it's the outside of the building that's never really lived up to its full potential until now. The museum here on Belle Isle is the kind of place that you either know exists or maybe you've driven past it and didn't really have an idea or you know nothing at all. But I can almost promise you once the renovations are done here, this spot is going to become one of the destinations on Belle Isle. So most of the most of the gadgets behind me are operational. As the senior historian for the Detroit Historical Society, Joel Stone can talk for days about the Dawson Museum, but the history buff is also thrilled about the future. The landscaping here has been this way for 60 years, and we just thought it was a time that there were some obvious opportunities where we could improve the visitor experience. Some real obvious win-wins for everybody. And those wins look like this, $5 million in upgrades. We got to tear all this out, got to give them a temporary entrance. Supervised by these two men from Brinker Construction. The plans are a new, much more accessible entrance, an event patio on the back, a river walk and event space on the other side, and a beach and kayak launch. We're cutting down all these trees. Um, so we're going to clear this area out and we'll just go through here and clean it out and clean it out, bring in sand and bring in sand and bring in sand. And so just dump trucks full of sand? Dump trucks full of sand. It's not real high tech. <laughs> the hope is the new areas will attract more to the museum and possibly more events like parties and weddings. Well, it's going to be the best place to have a party on the river. I mean, it's just it's right there. The freighters are going by, the boats are going by. It's going to be a spectacular space. <laughs> It's something new, even an antique tour guide driving a 1929 Model A can appreciate. Getting more people to interact with the history of the, what has been going on on the Great Lakes is an excellent thing. I love the idea of having a kayak launch to get out into the river too, instead of just going on the canals. I think the renovations here are really going to make people, make it a focal point for people to see. On Belle Isle, Nick Monticelli, Local 4. It should be really awesome. Phase one of that project should be done this coming November. The Detroit Historical Society says it has a pretty good base for funding, but could use some help reaching its final goal.